Hey, folks, if you could please stand. Folks, please be seated. <clears throat> In the presence of God today, we have come together to thank him for the gift of love expressed in marriage and to bless the union uh, of Kenny and Becca and to pray for God's blessing on their lives together. We're going to sing uh, our first hymn today. It's on your order of service. Um, the hymn Amazing Grace. So, Mia Valgrash, Nach Brian Hjol. Let's sing. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, marriage is one of God's gifts to us. As with all of God's gifts, it is a means by which we can know him better and to experience his blessing. The gift of marriage brings husband and wife together in the delight and tenderness of love, joyful commitment to the end of their lives. It's characterized by love, fidelity, truth, trust, and deepening commitment. Just as the Bible tells us, Jesus is united with his church, which it describes as his bride. So it's given to us as the foundation of family life, in which each member of the family in good times and in bad may find strength, companionship, and comfort, and grow to maturity in love together. As such, marriage enriches our society and strengthens our communities. For those reasons, we thank God for giving us marriage as his way of expressing love between two people. Marriage is a sign of unity and loyalty, which all should uphold and respect. No one should enter it lightly or selfishly, but reverently and responsibly in sight of Almighty God. Becca and Kenny will today each make solemn vows, both in the presence of this congregation gathered, but also in the presence of God who is watching over us. And in a token of their commitment, they will each give and receive a ring. We pray with them that God will guide and strengthen them throughout the future and that they may fulfill his purposes for the whole of their earthly life together. So let's pray to God. Just now. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that today we are rejoicing in one of your great acts of providence. That from before the foundation of the world, you had planned to bring this couple together. And we thank you for everything that has brought them to this point in their lives. We thank you for their parents, for their upbringing, and for their partnership and union to this point. And we thank you that today uh, we can come to this great milestone in their lives together. And so we pray for Becca and Kenny and ask that you would bless them, that you would help them, that you would today enable them to enter into this commitment with that full and free understanding of what is involved and that they would find great joy and delight in fulfilling this great purpose that you have brought them to this day. So help us receive our thanks. And as we do so, Lord, we confess our sin before you. We know, Father, that we need your forgiveness. We thank you that that is possible through Jesus. And we ask today that through Christ, we would know the blessing of God in our lives as well. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. One of the uh, great privileges is uh, of life um, in my line of work is that you get to bring people together and ask them difficult questions on their wedding day. But Becca's doubly blessed because she's got a dad for a minister as well. And so um, I'm going to ask um, I'm going to ask Mordangus now uh, to come up and to put the marriage of our questions to the couple. And if the congregation would please be upstanding for this part of the sermon. Well, friends, I've done this many, many times over the years, but never quite like this. Now, Becca and Kenny requested that they take their bows in Gaelic, so we shall proceed to that moment. Now, I want you to take each other by the right hand. Nisha. Vershaisha, Ponyok, Seamus McConney, the Gabba, the Beck and Claude, the Shavershu Shaw, Wife the Wife, Martha Venine, and in here Pawsey, the Visavelu Galtin, Fionish Gay, the Missawaha, the Pine of the Hans Shaw, Evigi, Na Fair Pawster, Grago, Gilas, a Visvesson, Willowine or Pet. This is Scarcia Shufakena. It's your turn. 
Shaisha, Rebecca Nikolaj, Gabal, Ponyok, Seamus McConney, the Shilashu Shaw, Why the Wine, Martha Poster, and Nia Poster. A Visvelu Gauthi, the Bodjuku, a Wahadie, a Visafian Shokhoina on the Shaw, a Vigar, a Ben Poster, Grago, Gila, the Gislesco, the Lawai the well, as a token of the covenant into which they have entered, um, there are rings now to be exchanged. They fit. <laughs> so in the presence of God and before this congregation, Becca and Kenny have pledged their union by their vows, the joining of hands, and by the giving and receiving of rings. So we can take each other by the right hand, please. I therefore, proclaim that you are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, please, you can be seated. Thanks, please. So we'll come just now to, to sign the, the marriage schedule. Get one of the 
So it's customary um, after you have signed away your lives like this <laughs> that um, that you would be. I, I would offer you some um, some advice and maybe some guidance for what lies ahead. Not from my own experience, uh, but from God's word in in the Bible. And this Bible is yours today. It's my gift to you, the best gift I think a minister can give uh, to anyone on this occasion. I want to read from 1 Peter chapter 3. Um, it's a, a passage, it's a, a lengthy passage where Peter is talking uh, to a number of different folk who might have experienced struggles with uh, the power that people have over them. And there are confusing and difficult things uh, that he has to say to them. But he starts here and he says, likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won through a word by the conduct of their wives when they see your respectful and pure conduct. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair, the putting on of gold jewelry, or the clothing you wear. But let your adorning be in the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham and called him Lord. And you are her children if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Amen. This is God's word. I was thinking about how to structure advice. Um, a mentor of mine I always used good anagrams to remember the points of his sermons. And so today, not knowing that the tables for the dinner settings were going to be named after famous Gallic BBC TV shows, I thought, well, what about BBC? And I was thinking, well, perhaps we could have different programmes that we might want to dream up. Perhaps a period drama, Becca's Betrothal to Cunha. <laughs> or perhaps a Trollerman-style documentary, Becca's brilliant catch. <laughs> but instead, I thought today the passage is one of these ones where I think there's maybe three very simple points that we can draw from it. Beauty, blessing, and Christ. It's a passage which is probably one of those ones, which even as I read it today, those of you who are not perhaps from much of a strong church background, you might be listening to it and thinking, that's a really difficult passage you've read there, Gordon. I mean, the Bible, sometimes we can write it off as being really irrelevant. And we can say, oh, in this modern day and age, talking about wives submitting to their husbands or talking about women as the weaker vessel, isn't that all really dreadful language that we don't really want? But it's actually, when we drill down into it, it's a passage in the Bible that is full of precious thoughts about how relationships in a broken world, 
can not only work, but thrive. In the world we live in, it's one where people are so often determined by what other people think about us and how they can gain power over us. And in the Roman world that Peter was writing to, power was often wielded in a brutal and casual way. Wives, like slaves, were essentially property, and they could be treated poorly as the owner wanted. One Roman writer advising women on their marriage told them to keep none of their friends from before because their husband's friends were now to be all that they would know. It's probably a good job that you guys have a lot of mutual friends, <laughs> I suppose. But Peter was writing to people who had some pretty miserable circumstances in their experience. And so in these difficult circumstances, his advice about relationships and the order of thriving relationships are threefold. First of all, he wants to write about beauty. Weddings are days of great beauty. I won't tell you the little conversation that Kenny and I had before Becca arrived, but he got a thumbs up from me. You know? <laughs> Everyone on a wedding day looks beautiful. Brides are beautiful. Grooms in their kilts are beautiful. Even a boy from Gerloch can scrub up well. <laughs> they can get complimented on as well. Everybody is beautiful. But our culture today, just like it was in Peter's day, our culture is one which can become looks and appearance obsessed, celebrity obsessed, the glossy mags and the internet pages that fixate on the latest style icons. We judge so easily on appearances. If you're worth is rooted in your appearance, you will live in constant fear because beauty fades and the passage of time brings its ravages. Peter wants to take the attention of his readers away from the external to the internal because inner beauty is lasting. It is indeed lifelong. It doesn't fade with age, <laughs> but rather it deepens. And that today is our great hope and prayer for Becca and Kenny, that their life and their experience together will be one where the inner beauty will shine through and become uncovered to them more and more as they know life together. The inner beauty that Peter writes about has a, a spoken and an unspoken component. That the bit he speaks about is the beauty of wives that inner beauty where the wife trusts her husband. But that means husbands have to have an inner beauty which is unspoken. Peter doesn't express it directly, but he says that beauty is that husbands have to be worthy of their wives' trust. Peter puts it so as to talk of a wife having a gentle and a quiet spirit. That's a picture of peace, a picture of calm. Now, I've known Becca for a few years, and sometimes that's maybe not <laughs> the impression you might get from her. But that's now Kenny's job, <laughs> is to bring peace for her so that she can have a gentle and a quiet spirit. And so that she can express that in trust of her husband. Peter uses an illustration of Sarah from the Old Testament, Abraham's wife from the Old Testament. And what he says is she trusted him such that she was at peace in the face of some very frightening stuff. Because she trusted her husband, she feared nothing. And the implication is that Peter, by his, sorry, that, that, that Abraham, rather, by his inner character, was worthy of his wife's trust. He took responsibility for her welfare so that she never doubted it and could know peace. There's nothing quite as beautiful as a couple, and I'm sure we all know them, people who've reached old age learning to trust each other. 
knowing each other's weaknesses and fears, and yet moving constantly to protect and honor each other. And so what Peter writes about here about beauty is that beautiful picture of a couple's lives woven together and strengthened. He secondly talks about blessing, he uses the word blessing, which says that's what we're for. It reminds us that that's our goal. It's easy to repay evil for evil. But Peter says he wants us to instead bless. And that's the call of all Christians, is to bless those around about us. That was the example that he uses of Jesus, who came to bless us from God. But we use that language so easily about what blessing it is. What a blessing it is for Becca to have a husband like Kenny, for Kenny to have a husband like Becca. What a blessing that is to be <laughs> for them as well. Not just, you know, laughing some of you, but I'm serious. It is a blessing. And what a blessing it is for these two families to be coming together in this way today and for all of the blessing that will flow and the hope that we have for the future. So we talk about blessing quite casually, but what do we mean by that word? In the Greek world, the Greek speaking world, in the ancient world, the island of Cyprus was thought to be blessed. So much so, in fact, that that's what they called it. It's sort of like a, almost like a tourist brochure. Cyprus, the blessed isle, the island that has it all. The fertile land, the great fishing, wonderful rivers, beauty. It epitomized blessing. And so when they thought about a place that was blessed, Cyprus was it. And that's what blessing really means. It means to be so well provided for that you lack for nothing. You never have any need. That there's an experience of joy in the satisfaction and the happiness of the provision that's made for you. And when we talk about that in the church, we often think of the Beatitudes, the blessings that flow to those in need, because God's character is one that blesses us. So everything humanly possible can be done to help us thrive. And Peter uses five words to describe that. He says, first of all, have unity. So share goals. You know, as you grow together, grow towards the same things. Find and identify things that you will have in common, things that you want to see brought forth and work towards it. Peter, secondly, he says, have sympathy. The idea is simply to understand one another's hurts. You know, as you go through life, there will be hurtful experiences come. And one of the great privileges of marriage is that you are there standing side by side, facing hurts and difficulties and challenges together. Peter talks about having love. The, the word he uses is brotherly love, but what that simply means is that idea of sacrificial commitment to one another. When the Bible talks about love, it always talks about sacrifice close by. And that's what marriage brings to us. Is a sacrificial love and commitment to one another. It means we have to put aside sometimes what we want to help the other person. We sacrifice perhaps even ourselves in these responsibilities. Peter says as well, have tender hearts. The idea of a tender heart is one that recognizes its own failings. And there will be times where you mess up. But be quick to apologize and seek forgiveness. And be quick to forgive, because that's the best way to joy. And finally, have humble minds. Uh, this is maybe challenging for all of us. But sometimes we have to realize we don't know it all. That we don't have all the answers. And even as a couple, in fact, you'll run into these times where you'll say, I don't have the answers. Perhaps we don't have the answers. So where do we go? And that's what leads us, I think, to the third strand that is so important in marriage. That impossible sounding shopping list can only be found if we find a third strand to help us. And that is Christ. Peter, when, when he wrote this letter, he uses, and we, we read it a couple of times there, the word likewise, likewise, wives, <laughs> likewise, husbands. 
And we need to ask, like what? Well, what was he referring to? And we didn't read the whole of the passage today. It's quite a long section. But in the previous few verses, Peter was talking about the man he had known in Jesus Christ. And what he's saying is when we're struggling to be at peace, when we're struggling to know how to take responsibility or when we're struggling to know the way forward when we don't know which way to go how to have unity and sympathy and love and tender hearts and humble minds how to be a blessing to those around us he points to jesus and certainly we need jesus as an example i mean we, we need good examples to learn from but the truth is if Jesus is just an example to us, then we'll feel miserable and disappointed. And Jesus is not just an example of a good guy, a wise man. He is someone who does so much more than example, be an example to us. He is a savior. He's a savior who takes away the guilt of our failings. And that's what makes it possible for us to forgive. That's why we can pray in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us as we forgive. Because forgiveness is important. But he's also someone who can transform us. He has the power to renew our hearts, to change what's there to bring about beauty inside us so that we can be a blessing and who can come and speak into the lives of others who can speak peace it's actually the motto of the bbc nation shall speak peace unto nation and that's what you guys will be empowered to do relying on jesus in your married life together speak peace into one another's lives and be a blessing to others because of that in ecclesiastes solomon he wrote a cord of three strands is not easily broken and today we're seeing two strands obviously woven together with becca and kenny pledging their love beauty and blessing coming together and the strand of christ woven together with that it's what will bring true and lasting and ultimate strength in all of our lives and in the earth. So let's pray just now for that. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, we thank you today that you are a God who brings us peace. The, the peace of God, which the Bible describes as surpassing all understanding. Is today available to us to experience and so we thank you for your grace to us that amazing grace that we've been singing of already that brings forth peace in our lives and so father we ask today that that would be becca and kenny's experience together that they would know peace that they would know stillness and quiet, that they would know trust, confidence, and that all of this would be enriched by your presence and your blessing throughout the days of their lives together. We know, Lord, that you are a good God. And so out of your great goodness today, would you bless them and prosper them in bringing that peace into the lives of others as well. May their union be a blessing to their respective families and in whatever the future holds, may they bring goodness forth in the lives of those around them and their friends and their families from this day forth. May your blessing then continue to flow. May we know what it is to find a God who is good. And may your goodness overflow in the experience of this cup. 
We ask this all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. We're going to have our second <laughs> item of praise just now. It's uh, Psalm 34 in your order of service. God, will I bless all times his praise. My mouth shall still express. Um, flowing through all the way to that version, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that God is good. Who trusts in him is blessed. These are precious words of the blessing that flows to our lives from a good and merciful God. So let's sing to his book. God will I bless all, all time. ask you please to be upstanding for the benediction and then remain standing as the bridal party leave. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of God to the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and always. Amen.
Right, go and get ready to throw confetti at them. Thank you. Where is that from? Much? Yeah. Much? I want too much in your reach. No, not at all. Thank you. Well, profile is possible while well, still capturing the important bit. Oh, absolutely. That's your idea. Yeah.
There's one over here. Where is it? Just put it where can I put it so that uh, you win? Uh, that top corner for those people. Like, now that's going to be our cake table, so we can hide them under there. No, it's fine. Yeah, just this top corner. Where is that? Set up this weekend. I don't have to finish this. We will finish the goals for this all. Thank you. 